the state of our union is stronger than ever before. You will not replace us! We are building the world's most prosperous and inclusive society. Tell people not to come to our country illegally. We pass the two articles of impeachment. The president is impeached. Now the virus, it's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle, it will disappear. If a city or a state refuses to take the actions that are necessary, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. He won by the margin of despair. He won by the margin, the fracture of our coalition. He won by the margin of racial division. He won by default, not by genius. He won when we were asleep. We got more and more folk and fewer and fewer services. We cannot stop. We got to rise on higher. It's time for a new course, a new coalition, a new leadership. Somebody. Got to rise above race, rise above sex, a new leadership, a choice, a chance. There's a little shepherd boy named David. Everybody in town was scared of Goliath, little David. Took off his unnecessary garments, little David. Didn't want to get weighted down with a lot of foolishness. Little David took what God gave him, a slingshot and a God biscuit, a rock. Our problem today is really go organized non-registered blacks, Hispanics, rocks, just laying around. Students unregistered, 11 million college students who could have chosen jobs over jails, peace over war, they didn't vote. Now they're crying. Rocks, just laying around. We're gonna stop the rocks. It's been laying around and pick them up. Rocks, just laying around. Don't cry about what you don't have. Use what you got. You want somebody who marched for you to get the right to vote? You got a choice. You want somebody who challenged corporate America to hire you and give you contracts. You got a choice. Rocks, just laying around. Your time has come. Pick up your slingshot, pick up your rock. Declare our time has come. A new day has begun. Red, yellow, black, and white. We're all precious in God's sight. Our time has come. It's choice time. Just laying around. It is time. It is time. It's time for the church to move beyond word. It is time for we as the church, this time, right now, to confess and repent of our past sins of racism, of all sin, and to move towards commitment to words and deeds. These are the words of Jesus, and that is what Justice Journey is all about. Good morning. Glad to have you all here today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, just allowing us to occupy this space and this time today. We pray, Lord, that um, you would cover us. There's a lot going on. Uh, we're still dealing with a pandemic. Uh, we're still dealing with civil unrest. We're still dealing with um, the killers of black men and women not being persecuted or should I say prosecuted, excuse me. Heavenly Father, we are still dealing with uh, fires here in California all the way up to Oregon. Uh, Lord, we are we're dealing with a lot. Uh, so we're just praying for peace in our city. We're praying for peace in our state. We're praying for peace in this nation. Uh, Lord, it's, it's a lot for us to deal with, but we know that uh, with you, uh, anything is possible. With you, anything can be changed. With you, transformation can take place suddenly. And so, God, we just, uh, we pray for all families. We pray for everybody that is listening, that is tapping into this service today. We pray for um our church, Chosen Generation, and we pray for every church that's open in your name, Heavenly Father. I pray for those pastors, those under shepherds, those leaders, those the folks who are doing doing uh, the work of being sure that the gospel is still going forth. And so, Heavenly Father, we just, we thank you today. Uh, bless this message. Bless me as I deliver it. Uh, I allow for the people to hear uh, what you would have for them to hear today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Um, and so today we're going to continue on in our series called X Marks the Spot. And last week I shared that this was a series that dealt that deals with discipleship. And discipleship is not something that, um, it's something that we deal with in the church, but uh, it, different folks have said that we probably don't put a lot of stock into it. We don't put a lot of weight into it. Uh, uh, we kind of, we kind of swipe at it, but we don't hit at it. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to give us time and space to really deal with this, this particular, the major part of who we are as Christians, the major part of of being the church. And so, last week we dealt with the voice. Uh, the title of the message was, title of the message was let me clear my throat. And, 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 and that message was about how we have to understand that there are, what, what are the voices that we're listening to? What, what is the voice that we listening to and, and who are we allowing to speak into our lives? And one of my points was that everybody who speaks into your life is not necessarily the voice of your future, which means that there are people that are speaking, but that doesn't mean that they are the voice that will usher you into your future. Uh, and, 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 and the voice that we should be listening to is the voice of God. It is, it is the, it is the preeminent voice, especially at this time in this space that we need to be listening to. We got a whole lot of other things going on. We got CNN, we got, uh, 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 uh the president of this country. We got politicians. We got the, we got folks who are running for the presidency. We got, we have a lot of folks. We got bosses. We got spouses. We got boyfriends and girlfriends and children and, uh, uh, friends and, uh, uh, pastors. And we got everybody talking, but what is the voice that we need to listen to? And the voice that we need to listen to is the voice of God. And so last week we talked about who are you listening to and who is speaking into your life? And understanding that Jesus in, in, in the scripture that we covered uh, is, is, is the shepherd. He's the one who handles the gate and, and what, what door are you walking through? Some doors you need to dismiss, but there are some doors that you need to actually uh, uh, accept when they're open. And he's the one who opens the gate. And so that's what we dealt with last week. This week, we're going to move into a second segment that ties into that scripture from last week or that sermon, excuse me, from last week. So last week, we, we dealt with the voice. This week, we're going to deal with um, 
uh, come with me, if you will, to the book of John. We're going to look at John chapter 15, and it's a familiar text. Uh, we've learned it, we, you know, we learned it in Sunday school. We've had it preached to us. We've had it uh, read to us in our devotion time. We, we've covered this, this text before. Uh, so come with me to John 15, verses 1 through 11. John 15, verses 1 through 11. And John 15 says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse five, I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And the title of today's message is, do you have a good connection? Title of today's sermon is, do you have a good connection? And so some of you may have, some of you may have experienced this. One of the things that I've experienced, you know, we, we, we've been under this, this whole pandemic pretty much for most of the year, but since March is when everything kind of, of went, uh, haywire, so to speak. Uh, and we've had to, uh, March is when, uh, I stopped physically going into my office and began this this process of working from home. Um, uh, our, our triplets were were sent home from their respective uh, 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 corners of the world, and 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 they had to begin doing their schooling online from home. And so, what I've experienced is that during this time period. Um, we have had, and maybe you've had it and, and, or, or it might just be me. I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't beat up on where we live a lot, but I do beat up on the, on the service that we have as far as our Wi-Fi is concerned. Uh, 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 and, 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 you know, I, I have issues with it. Let me just say that I have issues with it. Uh, uh, and sometimes I want to put the put the, uh, the, 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 the burden or the illness of our connection, our Wi-Fi connection on, on our carrier. And, um, I don't know about you, but over the course of since March, we have had crazy issues with our Wi-Fi. I can be sitting in one part of the house and things are good. And all of a sudden the Wi-Fi just drops. Uh, uh, um, it, it just happened last week. I, I was doing the service. Wi-Fi just dropped. Just, I mean, kicked everybody out, ended the service prematurely. Uh, uh, I guess God was telling me that I was done. That's, that's all the people need to hear. I don't know, but we, the, the connection went out and I'm constantly bouncing around the house. I'm outside. The other day I was thinking about getting up on the roof, uh, and seeing if I can get a better connection, see if I could just pick up my laptop like they did, uh, uh, in Lion King. You know, just like they lifted symbol, lift up my laptop to the to the to the heavens and see if I can get a better connection. The point is that we I think we've all experienced connection issues. And sometimes we have to understand that our Wi-Fi can be uh, can resemble our life. 
Sometimes we can have good connections. Sometimes we can have a, a, a good network of people that we connect with. But there are times to wherein our connection is poor. There are times to wherein we have a hard time connecting with people. And I think in this pandemic, I don't know if, it's, if if you've experienced this as well as I have, sometimes it's hard to connect with people now because now we have been put on notice that we can't uh, 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 touch each other. We can't hug each other. We got to do these air high fives and these air hugs and my elbows are getting more work than they have at any other time because I'm doing elbow pumps and I'm, I'm doing fist pumps and I'm doing all these things that are different. And for me, I, as I've shared before, I'm a hugger. I like hugging people. I like dapping my boys up and throwing my shoulder in. I, I like doing all of that. And sometimes that's hard to do. And so because of how we're living now in this pandemic, it has caused us to have uh, connection issues. It has caused us to really, truly have issues with connecting with each other. And so we find ourselves not able to make connections. And when we're not connected, that causes some, some issues in how we live out this life. And, and one of the things that has taken the major hit, and yes, I'm going to say it, is the church. Because we have not been able to meet together and gather in the church building that has limited some of our connection. Yes, Zoom is cool, but Zoom ain't the answer. Zoom is cool, but Zoom is not the end all be all. And at the end of the day, sometimes people just need connection. Sometimes people need to know and feel the energy of other folks. And I'm setting it up. I'm setting it up. We ain't going to be here that long. I'm setting it up. What I'm trying to say is that you got to be sure that your connection is strong. And in this season, it's not it's, it's, it's time out for us wavering on who we're connected to. I don't mean no harm. There are people that are trying to connect to me and I, and I, and I have to slow down the pace because every connection is not the right one for where God is trying to take me. So you got to be careful who you're connected to. Some of us are still connected into poor uh, uh, power sources that are zapping our power instead of giving our power. So we have to understand that right now, now is not the time for us to waver on who we're connected to. And now is not the time for us to disconnect from God. That's it. I am preached the sermon. I'm going to give the benediction. Let's open up the doors of the proverbial church. Uh, I can open up my front door since I'm here at the house. What I'm trying to say is if you don't get anything else out of the message, now is not the time for you to disconnect from God. You need to connect more to God. You need to plug in every power cord that you have to that, that you are able to use in your body. That means you need to connect to God uh, 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 in the morning. You need to connect to God in the noon day. You need to connect to God in the evening. That means you need to read your Bible. You need to be reading three and four devotions. You need to be praying seven times. You need to be going before the altar. You need to go into your prayer closet. You need to fall on your knees. You need to be sure that your connection with God is strong because the world is trying to disconnect you from your power source. So what we see here in John, John paints an eloquent picture of how we should be connected to our power source. God paints, John paints a beautiful picture of how we are connected to the one that enables us to grow. He talks about how uh, 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 we, that, 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 uh, uh, the true vine, the true vine, uh, uh, and, and that the father is the vine dresser in every branch. We are connected by this, by this vine. We are, we, we are the leaves and, 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 and Jesus is the vine and, and God is the vine dresser. So that means that we are connected in a way to wherein uh, uh, we get our, and, and we're going to get into it, th that this thing is part of 
for lack of a better term, it's designed as a matrix. The connection that you have at, at your home with your Wi-Fi is is not is connected through a portal that then con- that is connected to a power source that is outside of your house that then is connected to a greater power source. You see where I'm going with this? The 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 modem that you have in your house is just one part of a greater connection. But that modem is being fed power from a power source outside of your house. And that power source outside of your house is connected to a greater power source. That's how it is for us as disciples. And what what I really want us to get out of this whole thing about discipleship is, is like last week, the voice. Who's speaking into your life? Who are you allowing to speak into your life? This week, who are you connected to? Who are you allowing to be connected to you? Because you got to be careful. Some of us are plugging into some stuff that we don't need to be plugged into. I know. I know. It's okay. It's all right. I understand. I'm going to take the hit. Be careful what you plug it into. Because some of us want to plug into whatever is the as is uh, 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 the 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 hippest thing going on nowadays. Folks want to plug into who 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 is the hot uh, 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 who is the hottest thing going right now. Folks want to plug into whatever is popular, whatever is banging. They want to tap into whatever is going on right now. But let me explain something to you. Be careful what you're connecting to. Because what you're connecting to may not be what God wants you to connect to. Therefore, that's why your power is limited. That's why sometimes you're struggling. That's why sometimes you can't get your mental right. That's why sometimes you keep going over and over and over the same problems, running into the same issues because you're not connected to the right thing. So, 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 so. I'll give this analogy and then we're going to get into our points and then we're going to get on up out of here. Uh, uh, um, I, before, uh, um, I don't know if we had it in, if we had that issue in this house. I know I've had it before, uh, um, um, when I've stayed, you know, uh, other places, but, but, but it, it, sometimes you will, um, depending on what your lamp is plugged into, you will think that is something wrong with the bulb. You know, the bulb is what you th- you screw into the lamp and that's what illuminates the light. Okay. So you'll, you'll, you'll go and you'll buy, uh, 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 light bulbs. You'll go buy light bulbs. You screw in the light bulb, then you plug it in and you know, this is a brand new light bulb, but when you plug it into the wall, nothing happens. So you start, if you like me, I start saying, you know, I shouldn't have bought this lamp, man. I bought the lamp at, at big lots or someplace. Should have never bought it. Why do I have this thing? Let's throw this thing out. Yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden it comes to mind. Maybe I need to try a different plug. Maybe I need to plug it into if I got it plugged in on, on uh, got it plugged in on the east wall. Maybe I need to plug it in on the west wall. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I need to if, if it's plugged in in the living room, maybe I need to go try it in the den. And through that process, I find out that it's nothing wrong with the lamp. It's nothing wrong with the light bulb. It's something wrong with where it was plugged in because that's a dead uh, 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 uh uh, outlet, <laughs> if you will, that particular outlet is dead. So it's not giving any power. It's not giving any juice. It's not giving. It's not giving anything to uh, uh, allow for the lamp to uh, 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 cause a surge of power that then illuminates the light. So it's nothing wrong with the lamp. It's nothing wrong with the light bulb. It's something wrong with the outlet. I know some of y'all sitting there like, where's pastor going with this thing? Here we come through. Be careful what you plugged into because there are some things that you will plug into that will not give you enough power to illuminate the light that Christ has put inside of you. That's why when you walk into dark places, you take on darkness because your power source, your outlet is not giving you enough juice to illuminate your light. (laughs) Come on, speak Holy Spirit. What are you plugged into? Some of us are plugging into the wrong thing. 
Some of us want to get our power from social media. Some of us want to get our power from 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 folks uh, uh, who are not even speaking our language. Some of us want to get power from certain places and certain friends that's been dead a long time ago. You should have done the benediction and buried that friendship a long time ago. But you allowed yourself to be plugged in, and sometimes when the outlet is not a, 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 a is not a good outlet, it will take power instead of giving it. So what we see John saying here is that if we are if 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 we are the branches <laughs> if we are the branches and Jesus is the vine and God is the vine dresser how do how how does this thing work as far as discipleship is discerned I'm glad you asked point number 1 point number 1 connection deals with proximity and provision what John is trying to get us to understand is that our connection deals with proximity. Proximity means how close you are to it. Proximity means that there are some of us who live in this nation who cannot understand some of the plight of some of those of, that are of darker hue in this nation because they're not close to it. They're so far from it that they cannot believe that that goes on because their proximity is off. The closer you get to a problem or the closer you get to a people, the closer you get to their problems and then you begin to understand what they're saying. So connection deals with proximity. Going back to uh, 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 our Wi-Fi, it has been said. I've, I was trying to log in the other night on my phone, and it said cannot log, cannot. Uh, you can't get on that particular uh, 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 Wi-Fi. Uh, 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 because you're not close to it. Move closer to uh, your your Wi-Fi portal or whatever the case it may have said. Proximity. So connection is about proximity, how close you are. And it's also about provisions. What does it provide? What is it giving? Okay. And so when we look at this, when we look at this, we got to understand that, that our connection is, is, is based on how close we are. And it's also based on what it is giving. But don't look at it as a one way street. It's a two lane highway because connection is not only about what you can receive, but connection is also about what you are giving out. Catch me now. Because whatever you give, you need to give out also. That's why it's important that you're connected to your power source, the Lord, because at some point you're going to run into some folks who are going to need that energy that you've gotten from God, and you need to then do what? Provide it to them. That's why this whole thing about discipleship, it's not about addition, it's about multiplication. That means that what you get from God, you multiply that, and then you reproduce that in other lives. I'm teaching now. So, so, so first point, the connection deals with proximity and provision. The main point of what John is reflecting in this scripture is that, that branches can only produce fruit if they're part of the vine. They just don't produce fruit out in the air. The fruit is a byproduct of the vine that is connected to the tree. So the main point of this is that the branches can only produce fruit if they're part of a vine and that non-fruit producing branches have no part of the vine, which means that they need to be, they mean, that, that means that those branches that are not producing fruit need to be eliminated. There are some branches in your life that you call friends, that you call family, that you call bestie, that you call your BFF, that you call your partner in crime. Those are some branches that you need to cut off because they're not producing any fruit. And if they're not producing fruit, they don't need to be part of you because you are a fruit producer. Fruit producers don't connect with non-fruit producing branches. I don't mean no harm and we're not going to go there today, but that's why some of you all keep falling into these relationships and you can't understand why when you, before you got into the relationship, you were producing fruit. Now that you got into the relationship, you can't produce nothing because you can't get with somebody who ain't producing no fruit. Need to get with some fruit producers. 
Some of your relationships are non-fruit producing relationships. And then you want to wonder why you can't get ahead, why you stuck at the gate, why you can't progress. I don't understand what's going on, Pastor. The problem is that you are connecting with folks who ain't producing no fruit. Show me your first five friends and I'll show you it by their fruit where they're going. According to this passage, it is clear that it is it it is impossible to bear fruit without abiding in Christ. That word abiding means that you are accept, abiding means that you in a in a in a very common way means that you're accepting. You're not fighting against it. Abiding means you're leaning in. Abiding means that you are are surrendering. Abiding means that you are saying all of what I have comes from you, Lord. So, 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 so it's impossible to bear fruit without abiding in Christ. That means the branch don't fight against the, the, the vine because the vine is being dressed by the vine dresser, which means that the, the, the branch can't pull away from the vine because the vine is where the branch is getting its nourishment. Bearing fruit means growth. And producing good works, greater holiness, increased selflessness, more steadfast love. It also means making disciples of Jesus. How then do we actively abide in Christ? Look at verse number seven. In verse number seven, Jesus mentions two things that are key. And I want you to catch this. His words, his, 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 his words abiding in us and asking whatever we wish. Abiding in Jesus requires two clear components. You first got to seek God in his word. That means you got to read the book. That means you can't wait until Sunday for the message to be preached before you crack open your book. You got to be seeking God in his word. That means seeking means you are trying to find where God is matched up in the scriptures that you're reading. And also petitioning, crying out. Petitioning means prayer. Petitioning means calling on the Lord. Petitioning him in prayer. So first you got to seek him. So that means when you abide, that means you're seeking God in his word. That means you're doing devotion. That means you're joining Monday morning prayer at 7 a.m. That means that you are coming to Bible study. That means that you are in that word. That means that you are seeking God in his word. You are actively trying to find him. That means that, that, that you are trying to find God with a flashlight in the daylight. You are actively trying to find God in the word, and then you're petitioning him in prayer. So it comes from the word and and it comes from prayer. So I ask you, what is your word life and how, does, how is your prayer life working out in this season? Because you need to be trying to find God in that word and you need to be trying to pray as much as possible. In verse 10, Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love which may be understood as an outflow of seeking God in his word and petitioning him in prayer. We listen to the commands of Christ in scripture and ask for the strength to carry them out. So connection deals with proximity, how close you are to it, how close are you to God? And it's about provision. So he provides it's an outflow. If you seek him in his word and you petition him in prayer, the outflow of that is the provision of the love that Christ has for you, which means that it's not a it's not a one way thing. It means that the more that you seek Christ, the more he going to come closer to you. Point number one, connection deals with proximity and provision. Point number two, what the Lord removes is for your renewal. Mm. Come on, Jesus. What the Lord removes is for your renewal. We renewal, which means that he is renewing you, which means that the more he removes, the more he renews, the more he renews, the removes, the more he renews. So when he takes something, he brings something. When he sub, when he, when he is subtracting something, he's multiplying something at the same time. In Greek, the word for prune in verse two can also mean cleanse. Catch this. Sometimes following Christ entails suffering and pain. True disciples, those who are attached to the vine of Christ, 
can take comfort in the fact that during times of pruning or discomfort, God is cleansing them and bringing them into greater holiness. My Lord, which means that you got God sometimes will clean up your life by by pruning some stuff, by removing some stuff and doing the process of removing. That means you're going to suffer some discomfort. He removed that job. I know. But he has he continued to provide? Yes, he has. He removed that brother or sister out of your life. You thought it was going to break your heart. You were getting ready to go into your cocoon, pull the sheets over your head and, and want to give up on life. But no, he needed to clean you. Sometimes God needs to remove some stuff, that dead, non-producing fruit branch out of your life so that he can bring in some good holiness. You got to understand, come what may, God's purpose in pain is that we may bear more fruit. But see, you can't bear more fruit if you're not pruning yourself, which means that if you can't prune yourself, God will do it for you. God has told you there's some things that you need to remove out of your life, and you've been slewful in it. You've been real slow. You've been procrastinating. Oh, I don't know, Jesus. I'm going to give it one more chance. No, God told you to remove that stuff out of your life. And when you did not remove it, God came through and he said, that's okay. I'm a pruner. I'm going to prune this stuff out of your life. Why? Because God is the vine dresser. Part of being the vine dresser is, 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 is not only taking care of the vine, but it's about pruning the vine. It's about shaving that dead skin off. It's about taking off those dead branches. It's about removing those things that are not doing what it's supposed to do. We come here to bear fruit. We come here to bear fruit. When you give your life to Christ, our main objective is to bear fruit. So there will be an account that will be taken. As you graduate from this life into eternity, there is an account that will be a take will be taken as to what fruit did you produce while you were here. That's why God moves us out of certain situations. There is a season sometimes that we can be in this thing. And there are other times that we've got to move outside of that season. Why? Because there's only so much fruit that can be produced in a season. We used to have a thing on the refrigerator that said people are here for 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 a, a moment, a, a, a season, or a lifetime. You got to understand, everybody, see, we trying to put some folks into the lifetime category, and that's not their role. That's why, uh, that's why we get frustrated when things are not going right because we got them out of position. We got them in a lifetime type uh, 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 bucket when they were just supposed to be here for a moment. We doing lifetime stuff with moment people. <laughs> tweet that. We are doing lifetime stuff with moment people. Some folks only here for a moment. And I know it hurts. It hurts me. It bothers me. It hurts me when people leave. But sometimes God has got to remove some folks from your life. God has got to remove some situations from your life. God has got to remove you from some situations. And he's got to prune us. And the pruning part is painful. That means pruning means when you really understand pruning, Go on to YouTube and pull up pruning and you see that they got to clip away some dead stuff. They got to re- they got to remove some stuff. Uh, uh, Lady Karen has some rose bushes out here and the gardener comes and sometimes he got to clip that thing down to the base. But the beauty that comes from doing that in the right season, when he prunes it in the season where there's no growth, by the time that season of growth comes, there are some beautiful roses that that bloom. Don't allow for your rose to be killed off because you refuse to allow for the Lord to prune you in season. What the Lord removes is for your renewal. He's trying to renew you. Third and final point. Third and final point. Fruit multiplication is the goal. Fruit multiplication is the goal. I've shared this already. A branch on a vine is united with the vine in a life-giving way. Literally, the nutrients of the vine are passed on to the branch to keep it connected, growing, and strong. This is what it means for a disciple to be con- be united with Christ. And um, uh, 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 you got to understand that that for a disciple to be connected to Christ means that 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 disciple is getting nutrients. 
getting nutrients from the word of God, is getting nutrients from the prayer life. He's that, that he or she is getting nutrients from uh, from the under shepherd by being connected to a, a beloved community, which is the body of Christ. All of that is nutrient giving. That's why it troubles me when, when trouble comes or when people start shifting and people start getting out of, uh, 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 feel like, oh, I, I can't be here. I got to go over here and connect with these people or, uh, or, or, or pastor life is too rough. So we going too rough. So we going to take a step back. Who, who says that? Who, where's that written in the book? If anything, during seasons of great strife, that's when you need to lean into the beloved community. And that's when you need to lean into your to your prayer. That's when you need to lean into reading the Bible more. When 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 seasons are uncertain, that's when you need to settle. That's not when you uproot yourself and move somewhere else. That's when you stay at peace and understand that God has you there for a reason. But sometimes that you also have to keep in mind that God is still working and sometimes God will as we just talked about, prune you. I never will forget that um, when me and Lady Karen, when we first started dating and we 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 decided to get married, uh, <clears throat> I was still uh, uh, trying to figure out what life was all about. Uh, uh, and she'll probably enjoy this because I'm being very candid and open. I was trying to figure it out. <clears throat> I was still living at home with my parents, didn't really have, I don't even know if I was working at the time, uh, 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 but I was liking her. I was liking her a lot. And so when we, when we got married, uh, uh, um, we, we, I didn't have anything. I wouldn't bring anything to the party, but, uh, my reputation. And I mean, come on, <laughs> your reputation don't pay the bills. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm not saying my reputation was all of that. I'm just saying that I wasn't bringing nothing to the party, but me, myself and I, okay, that was it. Uh, 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 but, but when her and I got married, we became one. That means everything. That means she was bringing, she was bringing what she was bringing and what I was bringing is what I was bringing. And we brought that together. That means that my debt became her debt. Uh, uh, <laughs> my issues became her issues. Her issues became mine. That means that we, I was instant daddy because of my two older kids. Uh, uh, and so I was instant dad. I was instant husband. She was instant wife. Uh, she was inheriting, uh, my family, uh, uh, which they lovely people, but you know, they can be tough sometimes. You got to have thick skin with my folks. But, and so we, were, we, we brought all this stuff together in the middle. That means that what was in her bank account was now mine. And what was in my bank account, which wasn't a whole lot was hers. When we come together like that, that's where the branch and the vine are connecting. My branch, her vine, my branch and her branch, we connected with the vine uh, uh, because, of course, we met in church. And then God began, God be, be, became our vine dresser. What I want you to understand is that um, when you come to Jesus... When you unite your life with his, everything that belongs to him becomes yours. Yeah. So as we've already, as we've already talked about previously, his righteousness replaces your unrighteousness. When you come to Jesus, his spirit fills your spirit. His love becomes your love. His joy becomes your joy. His mind becomes your mind. His desires become your desires. His, his will becomes your will. His purpose becomes your purpose. His power becomes your power. So as we live as Christians, as we live as disciples, life then becomes nothing less than the outliving of the indwelling of Christ. That's all I need you to get out of this message. Do you have a good connection? Do you have a connection that is, 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 is that deals with the closeness and the provisions that you can get from Christ? Do you have a connection to where you see that the Lord is, 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 is removing some things in your life and he's renewing you? Do you have the kind of connection to where you see your fruit multiplying? You ought to be able to walk through this life and walk through this world and see where you have fruit. You need to be able to see where you have, you have, you have, you have bared fruit. 
If your life is not bearing fruit, then I, I, I need you to clock in. I need you to get closer to God. I need you to really tap into this thing and, 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 and walk it out. Read your Bible. Pray more. Get with Bible study. Right now, everybody is everybody. Pastors don't have no members. We just got people that we preach to. <laughs> you got Bible studies on, on, on YouTube. You got Bible studies on, on uh, Facebook. You got Sunday service. You got midweek service. You got singing. You got prayer service. You got all this stuff on social media at your disposal. You can, you can sit at the house. You can lay up in the bed, sit on the, on the couch in the den. You can do all of that from the comfort of your home. So what is your excuse? There are some folks that are still late to service like they were like we was we was back in the building. There are some folks that are still late getting the service. Why? Service starts at the same time all the time. You got to want it. You got to really desire it at this point. Chase after God. William Murphy has a song I listen to quite often. I'm a God chaser because I'm chasing after God. Not saying that I have to because God is not moving from me, but it's, it's called a yearning. It's called abiding. In this season, do you have a good connection? Because if your connection is weak, boy, I tell you, the world is not going to help it. If you got a poor connection, you're going to falter. If you got a poor connection, <laughs> You're going to drop at any point in time, just like your Wi-Fi. But if you got a good connection, if you got a good power source, it'll feed you. It'll give you the power that you need in this season. It'll enable you to keep pushing on. Do you have a good connection? Hope this message bless you today. Be blessed. I'm Pastor Cedric. You know I love you. As we say at Chosen G. I love you. God loves you best.